Welcome back to KSP From the Ground Up. We are continuing with episode two today. Now, if you saw my episode yesterday, you are uh, already aware of a little bit of kind of what this series is going to be about. We are building a space program, as it says, from the ground up, um, following uh, the pattern of the United States Air Force and then later NASA, and taking some cues from the Russian and European space agencies. And eventually, maybe we'll get to some privateer type, uh, private space exploration um, or, or research, things like uh, Spaceship One, things like um, SpaceX, and maybe even Bigelow Aerospace and things like that. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, as yesterday's episode demonstrated, jumping right into space is not a good idea, and of course that is not what the United States did. Um, trying that yesterday, we built a rocket, pointed it straight up, went into space and killed everyone. So in an attempt to avoid that, we're going to take a step backward and look at the X-15 supersonic aircraft. Now the X-planes were a series of test bed aircraft. There still are X-plane designations occasionally when we have new uh, test beds and things for aerospace and pushing the limits of aerodynamic design. But the X-15 was a supersonic test bed in the early 60s, and I believe it was in service all the way up until 1968. But it was an effort to study effects of supersonic air travel on, uh, on humans. So they were manned flights. Neil Armstrong actually was a pilot for seven of those missions. Um, so we are going to see if we can't replicate a little bit of that and see what we can learn about it before we go all the way into um, into space on another attempt at a suborbital flight. So let's go ahead and go out to the runway here. Alright, there she is. Now, of course, the X-15 is not the only aircraft in this shot. We have our B-52B. The B-52B was the launch platform of choice for the, uh, the Air Force and NASA uh, for the X-plane programs, any, any X-planes that were not actually able to, uh, to take off from the runway on their own. So the idea of this here would be that the B-52 would be used as a launch platform. It would fly to the height of its service ceiling, about 15,000 uh, meters, and drop the X-15 with its pilot in it, and the X-15 would then kick on its own rocket motor and go the rest of the way up. So we are going to do that very same thing. Looks like Gus Lock Kerman is our lucky astronaut who gets to be the first pilot to hopefully fly this thing and survive. So here we go. Let's get him over here. Oh, he's so excited. He's running as fast as he can over to the ladder. And let me just flip over to oops, here, extend our ladder down. And get him up there. Okay, there we go, and let's go ahead and put up the ladder, and retract the gear just on the X-15, trying to reduce our drag a little bit. Now you can see here these engines is part of one more mod that I went ahead and added. Well, there's two mods in this shot that I went ahead and added. Uh, there is the Coffee Industries Modular Aircraft mod, which adds a number of parts in terms of aerospace uh, or aerodynamic parts. We've got some fixed wings, some swept wings, some different turbine options. The only part I'm using actually is this turbine and its accompanying engine. Now the other thing we've got here is the Mark IV uh, fuselage pieces. Now Mark IV, essentially, um, these are 
just scaled up versions of the Mark III with a little bit of work to make them hollow for things like uh, cargo and fuel and things like that. But in order to try and be as realistic as we can in terms of the scale of all this stuff, I went ahead and added it. So we've got our giant B-52 analog and our X-15. Let's go ahead and get this thing in the air. Now this is a very tricky thing to fly, especially because of the weight distribution. Uh, we have a very heavy sort of uh, payload and it's off center and uh, even with the improved aerodynamics um, it's still just not real not real uh, oops looks like I missed one of the landing gears somehow got everything else All right, let me go ahead and manually put that up here there we go uh, yeah so it wants to pull very hard to the right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna turn it first off I'm gonna put on fine controls you don't really want to ever fly an aircraft or a space plane without fine controls. You can turn those on hitting caps lock and you'll see the little roll yaw and pitch indicators turn blue to show that that's on. Now I'm also going to set the trim. In order to do that you hold down alt and then you just push the direction keys for roll yaw or pitch and it will adjust the default position of the trim. Now I'm going to put yaw almost 50 percent to the left. Uh, that's what it takes to keep this thing going straight down the runway. Alright so everything looks to be set. The other thing I'm going to do is hit the parking brake. Just click right up here and it'll set the, the brakes without having to hold it and throttle up. We need about 175 meters per second of, uh, of speed before we hit the end of the runway in order to even get this thing in the air. So you got to have to to be a little tricky with it, we're going to actually get our thrust, uh, our engine spooled all the way up so that each engine is producing 100 kilonewtons of thrust and then uh, once we're there, then we can release the brakes and start going forward. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on kill rotation on mechanical Jeb right up here. What that's going to do is just make it, it doesn't really do a whole lot on the ground, you still have to drive this thing manually, but when we pull into the air, it's going to hold our attitude without me having to do too much in terms of uh, correction. So, a little twitchy still, now it's kind of trying to pull to the left, adjust the trim a bit. And the one last thing is we have JATO, or Jet Assisted Takeoff. Yes, even with eight engines, this thing is still not quite capable of getting up to speed. You see, we just barely made it into the air there. So I went ahead and added uh, Jet Assist Takeoff. Sometimes you'll hear it called RATO Rocket Assist Takeoff. All I did is just added a whole bunch of sepatrons to one of the little structural pieces uh, that's a new one point one nine put it on both sides and added it to a stage and that just gives us the little extra boost that we need in order to actually make it into the air with our heavy payload so now we are going to pull up at about 35 degrees and climb to Oh, lost a uh, <laughs> lost an aileron. Well, we got plenty left, so we're okay. Uh, we're going to climb to 10,000 meters. Now, as I mentioned, the operational ceiling for the B-52 is about 15,000 meters. Unfortunately, the parts just aren't quite uh, the same in, in Kerbal Space Program, so 10,000 is about the most we can go without stalling. We can't get the speed on this thing here. Our... our custom jet engines are just no match for the, uh, uh, I believe they're Pratt & Whitney, uh, possibly General Electric, I don't know, I, I didn't look up that particular statistic on the B-52, but whatever they are, they produce a lot more thrust than what we're actually getting out of these, uh, out of these engines from the Coffee Industries mod. Okay. So we are climbing rather quickly here. Now the X-15 during its tests, it actually was the aircraft that set the still still current uh, speed record for any aircraft reaching um, about 2200 meters per second. Now in Kerbal Space Program, 2200 meters per second is actually orbital velocity and the, uh, the service ceiling, or the highest altitude ever reached by the X-15, was about 200,000 meters, which of course is actually space. Um, however, since Kerbin, uh, the planet, is, uh, is I want to say it's relatively, what is it, a fourth the size of Earth, or something like that, whatever it is, it's much smaller, and it's, uh, it's actual transition from 
atmosphere to space is much lower in altitude and the orbital speed necessary to maintain a low carbon orbit is about a third of the speed necessary to maintain orbit around Earth. So yes, if the X-15 were actually magically transported to Kerbin, it would qualify as a single stage to orbit vehicle. Uh, however, on Earth, it barely makes it about a third of the way to what it would actually need to maintain an orbital velocity. So we are coming up on 10,000 meters presently here. I'm still, even though I've got kill rotation on, I'm still having to manually adjust this just a little bit. And of course, I still have the deadly re-entry mod, which you wouldn't think would matter for today's excursion, but I was testing this earlier, and if we are flying in, uh, in the low atmosphere, just simply getting this thing up to about Mach 1.5 ends up starting to burn off some of the... Um, some of the, the control surfaces on our X-plane, so uh, we are definitely going to have to get as much height out of this thing at lower speed as we can before we turn that rocket motor on a full blast. Okay, we are getting up there. As I said, Neil Armstrong actually did pilot several of these X-15 missions. His personal lands or uh, airspeed record ended up being something like Mach 5.71, I think. It's a, a very fast... Uh, there we go. Very fast personal land speed record. Uh-oh. Ooh, that's not good. Okay. Let's see if we can get this under control. If not, I might just have to uh, dump the X-15 and... and Keep it going. Ooh. Okay, okay. I just don't want this thing... The, my bigger concern... We're plenty high. I can recover from a spin or a roll or whatever. My biggest concern is I don't want to tear this thing apart because with the... Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. That's not good. All right. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this under control. I'm going to dump the X-15, see if we can get it out of here. Okay, let's switch over to control on that. Gooselock Kerman is probably the only one going to survive this. So, let's go ahead and pitch over. I don't think I'm quite... Uh, Unfortunately, the way that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the way that staging and multiple craft are handled in, in Kerbal Space Program, it doesn't, doesn't work terribly well to, uh, ooh, let's try and slow down here. That's going to start tearing us apart if we're not careful. Ooh. Well, that didn't go nearly as well as I'd hoped. Well, there's the uh, little Easter egg runway on the island off the coast of Kerbal Space Center. Alright, let's slowly see if we can't rocket our way back uh, up, up, and away. Get rid of that little piece there. Okay. Now the good news is at least for the X-plane, we are still in one piece. I'm going to go ahead and throttle up here and see if we can't make up some of that some of that altitude that we lost. Ugh. Well, that's why it's uh, that's why it's an experimental program, folks. Luckily, we do have a fairly good amount of fuel, although I, I, would ho I was hoping to use that to try and see if we could match the speed record of 2,200 meters per second. If this doesn't go according to plan, I may go ahead and cut it and then come back with a hopefully more 
successful attempt at this thing. You can see even with Mechjeb holding rotation, it is really twitchy. Uh, and I'm not sure why that is, actually. I've got... Seems... Oh, well, right now it would make sense, because I don't have the, the airspeed to keep out of a stall. Let's try to get this thing up. I, I don't want to go much above 200 meters per second, not just because it's inefficient, but because uh, I run into the danger of starting to overheat some of these more sensitive parts. Here we go. Let's kick that on. Oop, another stall, because I can't just can't keep the airspeed up. I don't know why. I'm not that I'm not that high. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut it here, and then uh, meet you guys back with what is hopefully going to be a better attempt number two. Okay, so we are back went ahead and leveled us out here at about 7200 meters because just taking a look at our uh, <clears throat> FAR flight information we are uh, we are approaching apparently approaching Mach 1 and uh, starting to uh, starting to end up with some stalling on the wing here so we're gonna try and we're gonna we're gonna call that the ceiling right there and we're gonna go ahead and release our X-15 Plane in three, two, one. Let's go ahead and switch over to it. All right. Oops. Forgot to. Haha. <laughs> forgot to uh, pull up that ladder there. Let's keep Mechjeb is still on, and we're going to throttle up. Now we are still actually in a little bit of that. Uh, oh. I could use an engine, please. Staging gets a little bit messed up. There we go. Okay. Now, we are still in pretty thick atmosphere, despite being, uh, you know, a couple of miles up. So, we got to be a little bit careful not to overheat anything. I'm going to pitch the nose up here. If I can. There we go. Yeah, not stalling. We should be okay. Why are we not... Oh, because I've got the surface. Okay, kill rotation. Come on. There we go. Oh, oh. Hmm. Let's get a little bit more engine gimbal here. Maybe that'll help me control my attitude a little bit. Pitch it up a little bit more. Come on. There we go. There we go. All right. Now we're climbing. Good. Still don't want to overheat anything. This looks much better. Okay. We're at 10,000 meters. This is normally where we would start our gravity turn. But of course, being a, an aircraft rather than a uh, vertical rocket, we don't really need to do that. We've technically always been in a gravity turn, a very shallow one. Very twitchy here. Okay. burning through our fuel here pretty good. We're up to uh, 20,000 feet. I can afford to kick the throttle on. Ah, look at that. We've come close to getting up out of the, the thicker atmosphere. We're no longer, we're seeing stars now, so that's pretty awesome. All right, we're high enough. We're thirty thousand is the uh, is the cutoff for both the reentry effects and the deadly reentry mods. So now that we're up above, we can go ahead and just kick over at full speed. See if, see what our maximum speed is when we run out of fuel here. There we go. Okay, twenty five hundred meters per second. That does actually 
outperform the original X-15 by about 300 meters per second. And there we are. Our first successful space plane. Not an orbital one, but it was successful. And there's the awesome atmospheric music indicating that we are in out completely out of the atmosphere and into space. So we're gonna pitch down just a little bit. Actually, no, I take that back. We're gonna pitch up just a little bit because we are moving super fast. Want to make sure when we re-enter that we don't end up with. Uh... Ooh, okay, there we go. Want to make sure we don't end up coming in at too too sharp of a descent because that will re-engage the. Um deadly re-entry mod and if it when we get back down to 30,000 feet uh, yeah we'll see that <laughs> that may be a pretty sharp descent all right we may end up with some more dead kerbals for episode two I'm gonna risk a little bit of uh, time acceleration here. See what gravity ends up bringing us back in. All right. Well, Gus Lot Kerman looking very happy to be in space today. left orbit at a, or left the atmosphere at about 2500 I'm hoping gravity doesn't uh, doesn't get us up too much beyond that on our way back down all right we're back in the atmosphere now so we're gonna have to see how much we can bleed off in terms of speed before we get down to 30,000 we're coming in really steep though this uh, this is probably going to end badly for Gus Locke. He's bleeding off. Uh oh, can't keep the can't keep the the pitch controlled here. Getting a little too much drag. Oh, there's the re-entry effects. Really don't want to flip over. I don't mind going in sideways, but I really don't want to. Oh hey, I think we managed to do it. All right. Way to go, Gus Lock. Now, question is going to be Can I land this thing without power? Cuz the lift surface uh on surfaces on this thing is is not terribly high. Okay. Start pulling up. We're gonna have to keep our speed up, probably above above 150 meters per second, if we want any chance of bringing this thing in uh, level. Let's 
still stalling at 10,000 feet, which is not good because that mountain is very tall. And if I can't get a uh, little bit of a glide trajectory here, we are going to plow into it pretty quick. Okay, there we go. Very twitchy uh, controls here. And I, I don't know why exactly. I've had this problem from the beginning of the design. No matter what I do, it seems to want to roll really, really easily. I'm going to try and keep my speed up as long as possible here. I'm going to go into a little steeper descent. I'm going to keep my gear up all the way until we're just about ready to touch down and see if that doesn't maybe keep us alive. down 3.5 kilometers I'm going to even this out just a little bit I am using uh, MechJeb as kind of a, an advanced, advanced SAS to keep my attitude level here. And uh, if you think that's cheating, actually, if you look in the, uh, in the history and the information of the X-15, even back then in like 1961, 1962, they did have electronic stabilization and, uh, and, and very, very early computer navigation and autopilot. So uh, yeah, can't blame me because Neil Armstrong did it too. All right, let's go ahead and get the gear down. Uh, hello, gear down. There we go. Okay. And... Just so happened to be in a very, uh, very sh e even uh, flat plane here, which is good because... All right, brakes. Don't flip. Don't flip. Don't flip. I told you not to flip. Oh... Uh, well, another good try. We at least made it back up into space and then back down without anything uh, burning up. Unfortunately, uh, Gus Lott Kerman was just not up to the challenge of landing. So uh, I'm going to end that here. We will see you next time. I think we've learned quite a bit from this little uh, expedition. Maybe we'll be able to put that into uh, to, to good use in our next attempt to ascend to the stars. So uh, again, if you like this video, go ahead and click like, subscribe if you want, and we'll see you next time.